Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk about collection classes. And the reason why we have collection classes inside of Java is it makes it real easy to keep track of groups of objects. And specifically, I'm going to talk about array lists in this tutorial. And really, you can think of an array list very that they are very similar to an array, except for the fact that they automatically resize whenever you both delete or add items to them. So they're really, really nice little tools to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is import my array list list library that's going to allow me to use array lists. Then I'm going to come in here and also bring in the iterator class, which is going to be very, very useful and the arrays library, which you have already seen in the past. And then what we're going to do is public class, and this is called Java Lesson 11. And then, of course, public static void main string args, which is mainly where we're going to be working from today. A lot of this stuff's going to see similar to you because it's very similar to what you're going to do whenever you are creating an, a simple array. That's how you create an array list variable. And then you can go take array list one, which you just created here, and actually create an array list object, just that simply. And as you can see here, I didn't have to define how big this guy is because it's going to automatically change sizes. And just understand that by default, it starts out as a default size of 10. But then, like I said, that doesn't really matter to you. Another thing. If you want to define everything all on one line, well, you can do that, of course. Let's just like that is equal to new array list. There you are. You just created an array list all on one line. Now, by default, an array list can contain any type of object, any type of information inside of it. But let's decide that you want to only accept strings. Well, if you come in with these little brackets right here, it's going to automatically only accept strings into your array list, right like that. And the one weird thing is you want to make sure you have these little ending brackets. Here. So now we just created an array list that only accepts strings and we called it names. So what happens if you want to add different elements to this new array list? Well, you just call the add function and let's say you wanted to add John Smith to this and let's just copy this a couple times here and throw a couple other different names in here. So let's say, let's say you wanted to put Muhammad Alami in here and you wanted to put, these names are totally pulled out of the air by the way, and Oliver Miller. Another way you can add items is, like I said, there's a have index values, so they're very, very similar to an array. So John Smith would be an in index value 0, 1, and 2. Well, let's say you wanted to add an item to a very specific index and then just have everything move into place. Like, let's say you wanted it to go into the 2 index and you wanted to add Jack Ryan to that. Well, that's all you need to do is call the add function and then define the index that you want to put inside of there. And if you want to retrieve all these, you're going to use the get method. I'm going to use a for loop here. There's numerous different ways of pulling these things out. However, now you need to know how big the array list is. So it's real simple. Just type in names, size, because that's the name of it. Size will tell you how big it is. And then it makes your life a lot easier here. Because like I said before, to get these values, you're just going to put the name of your array list, dot, get, and then put i inside of there. Now, as you can see, Eclipse helped me out there. If we execute this, we can see exactly what we're going to get. Pretty much what we expect. John Smith, Muhammad Alami, Jack Ryan, and Oliver Miller. Everybody printed itself right out there on our screen, which is good. Now, if you would want to actually replace a value inside of an array list, it's also extremely easy. Just go names and set and the index value you want to change and then John Adams. So if you want to put John Adams in there instead of having John Smith inside of there, well, we're going to just copy this guy right here or cut him out of there right like that. And all this code is underneath the video. You should definitely get it because it's highly commented and it's free. So why not? And there you go. John Adams has replaced John Smith. Just like that. We did away with him and get ourselves a little bit more space here. You can also come in and remove items in different ways. So let's say we want to remove whatever lies in that index value of three. Very easy to do. Let's go like this just as a shortcut and execute it. And you're going to see that Oliver Miller is no longer going to be with us. See, he's gone. You could also use names and remove range. If you wanted to delete, say, the first and the second index value, that's exactly how you would do it. And that would delete it off of the array list. No longer be there. I'm not really going to go into that that much because, you know, it's pretty easy to figure out on your own. So there's no point in spending a lot of time on it. Also, if you would want to print out all these items that are in the array list, this is more for debugging reasons. You wouldn't really do this. Anything else, you just put system out, print line, of course, remember that dot right 
right there and execute. And you're going to see that it printed everything out there inside of brackets. I'm showing you pretty much everything there is to know in regards to how they use these guys. You can also use the enhanced for loop and we're going to use it pretty much exactly the same way that we had before, right like that, the way we talked about it whenever we were doing all this stuff with arrays in the past. And it's just system out, line, and just put I inside of there. And just like it works for arrays, it's also going to work for all of our other little things that we're working with. And you can see that I'm right by just clicking there. And there you see it's printing out everything all over again. Now you may have noticed that up above I used a iterator library. Well, the reason why is because before the enhanced for loop came around, you had to use what was called an iterator. And again, it's these are all objects, and all these objects have methods and fields or variables inside of them that allow you to perform certain tasks. Now, if you want to create an iterator object, just going to go iterator, and let's say I want to call this individual items, and I just go names dot iterator. And simply what this does is it creates a new iterator object with methods that allow you to iterate through the values that are currently in your array list. So let's do that. And like I said, this is before the enhanced for loop, it was always done this way. So I'm gonna go through it because chances are you may see code that looks like this somewhere. Now, if you wanna iterate through all of these different values stored inside of here, you're gonna make a call to has next. Now see, look here again, here's the individual items right there. That's this object iterator you created. And then you're gonna call a function called has next that is a iterator object method. And all this guy does is it returns a Boolean value saying, are there any additional values that we need to do stuff with? Just a method, not a big deal. And if there are, well, you're gonna call the next method and you're gonna print them all out the screen until has next returns a value of false, meaning there's nothing left to print out. And you can see this is all very, very easy to work with. And it's just printing those names out there on the screen that you've seen in the past. Well, like I said before, you can create array lists without stating the type of values that are inside of them. And just to prove that to you, I'm gonna create an array list. So I'm gonna call this name copy is equal to new array list. And it's not throwing any errors because it's totally possible to do that. And just because I need it here in a second, I'm gonna create another array list. It's gonna be called name backup and new array list. So I just created two array lists that can hold pretty much any type of value I throw at them. Now, if you would wanna take all of the different values that are stored in one array list and copy them to another piece of cake, just go name copy, the guy that you want to copy stuff to, and you call the add all method. And then you put inside of it the array list that you want copied to the new array list called name copy. Add all, it's just going to copy everything in names and save it to name copy. That's all. And I'm not going to print that out because it's going to print out the same exact thing again. You can also, let's say we want to create a string and let's call it Paul Young for some really bizarro reason. Paul Young, right like that. And if you wanted to take this string and save it to an array list, you can just go names.add and Paul Young, because Paul Young is a variable or a field or what you want to call them. So there's another way to add those guys to it. And if you wanted to check if a specific item is inside of an array list, well, we just created this string called Paul Young. If we wanted to check to see if it is inside of there, you're going to go names and call the contain method Paul Young, whatever the value is for Paul Young inside of here. And if Paul Young exists, this is gonna come back true, or the contains method's gonna come back true. And you could say something like Paul is here and execute it. And there you can say Paul is here, print it out the screen because the contains method came back as true because we put Paul Young in right here. And that's the reason why all that printed out the screen. So you can see there's a ton of methods that are really, really useful for you to be able to work with this stuff. Now, another thing you can do, like let's say you wanted to check if everything in one array list is in another array list. Well, you could go if and go names contain all method is what you're going to be working here and what you're asking is does the array list called names contain everything that is in name copy that's what we're asking here that's the big question and in that situation where that is true we're going to say everything in name copy is in names and execute and you can see everything is name copy is in names what we did before was we took everything in names and we saved it to name copy however we then added paul young to the names array list so you may be wondering is this going to come back 
positive if we come in here and change this to names and change this to name copy. And it's not going to come back. I can just tell you that right now. See, didn't pop up. The reason why we copied names to name copy. So name copy has everything in it that names did before, but then we added to names. So everything in name copy is going to be contained inside of names. The only thing is, is names has one additional value. But that doesn't affect anything because of what we said before. Didn't quite get that. Just think about it for a second. You'll definitely pick up on it. And if you wanted to delete everything that's inside of an array list, you just call the clear function. And that's what it's going to do. It's going to delete every single item inside the names array list. If you want to check if an array list is empty, just call the method is empty, and it's going to return a Boolean value of either true or false. We can just say array list is empty, and it's going to come back as a true, or at least it's going to print the array list is empty, and it did. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, using the generic object data type, I'm going to create an array called more names, new object, and because it's an array, I'm going to have to say it's four deep. It has four little shells inside of it. And I'm going to show you how to turn an array list into a regular array full of objects. So I'm going to go more names is equal to, and you just go name copy, which is the name of my array list. And you say to array, right like that. And now everything that was stored inside of name copy is now going to be stored inside of this array called more names. Put that in there, it's capitalized. And if you want to see proof of that fact, I'm going to use the arrays function to string and I'm going to have it print out to the screen the array called more names. And as you can see, that's exactly what it did. It printed everything out there. So that was a run through of pretty much anything you could possibly do in the array list. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.